Yes, blessed love to each and everyone. Give thanks for your presence with us. You've definitely stepped into the tiger's nest. We glorify the almighty eye. We give thanks to the father and mother of creation and give thanks to the life giver with us, King Celestia. Ja Rastafari. It is an honor that we could come and sup with you at this moment. As you could see right before you, the tiger's nest. And this is our international radio program that's aired every Monday, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you know, on our international radio station, Radio Anu. Yes, I, you can definitely check us there, 7 p.m. sharp on the evening time. The program is called The Tiger's Nest, the radio version of The Tiger's Nest. In fact, all you have to do to get there is to visit our international website. Let me just give you a quick run through of the website. Have you visited our website yet? It's, it, it, it is priestisaacinstitute.com. It's the website of the Priest Isaac's Institute of Holistic Knowledge. So it's priestisaacinstitute.com. You get all the information when you get there. Of course, you can go straight to the radio annual link where you would listen to the international flavor even while you go through the website at the same time. For sure, you could go into the academy section. This is a section where you could actually enroll in the international homeschool classes. And let me just remind you again, although we have passed the 27th day of September, which was Mascal yesterday, do give thanks for the commemoration of the finding of the true cross of Christ. And we had a wonderful program, I must say, previous evening on the shock of the hour, directly dealing with that very subject, the subject of Maskell. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we had a special offer that was to come to its end on that day, and we decided to extend it. So for sure, you could contact us. You could just visit the website. All the information is there. You could click on to the link. Um, as I said, we will definitely interact with you to the point that even if you want a sneak preview of the, the international homeschool classes and, you know, to have a better idea of what you would get, for sure, we could definitely, you know, accommodate you as it relates to such. So yes, just visit the website, my family, for sure. Remember the international flavor, that's Radio Anu. Just click it on and we'll be there 7 p.m. this evening for the Tiger's Nest. What I wanted to touch upon here is something that, you know, well, we have touched upon it already, but I decided, okay, let me go at it from another angle. Of course, you know, of the whole aspect of the, the, the Hebrew Israelites in, in, um, in, in Demona, in, in the land known as Israel today. And of course the deportation, the Israeli government want to deport them. So, you know, we did a program as it relates to that a few evenings ago. And although it was not religious or meant not to be controversial in any way, for some reasons, when you speak about Israelites and Hebrew Israelites, apparently the different factions come up. But anyway, there was a, a challenge once again, you know, as it relates to my, my, my concept of the whole idea of the true biblical land of Israel. And as I mentioned that, let me just share the screen with you. This is one of our international ebooks. This is the true biblical land of Israel. You could also even visit the website and, and, uh, and uh, even get your copy of the book, The True Biblical Land of Israel. And basically, before I go into what I'm going to say, this was uh, originally put together as a theological paper. So the whole the whole theory then of the paper was that the land of Israel, according to the biblical account, the, the geographic biblical description, the land of Israel, according to that book, is the land of Africa plus Arabia. So basically that's the moral of the story. That's really the point of the book. And that the true Israel 
lies. And when I say the point of the book, the point of, of the book that we pen, not the point of the book, the Bible, I'm, I'm saying that the Bible speaks of the land of Israel and gives geographical boundaries and understanding of where it is. And all accounts highlight the land of Africa plus Arabia. That is what the book is about. And then an extension as it relates to the people that are referred to as the children of Israel or the Israelites and, and the children, Judah and the Israelites and, and these different things. So, so, so basically, this is what I'm highlighting here uh, in the book itself. So obviously there's so many things that go with it. You know, that is why the book has several chapters that go into the initial plot because there's an initial plot that was given uh, from, from, from God unto Abraham according to, you know, when we go through the story. And then the land was expanded onto the great sea. And we take time to explain this great sea saga and where the great sea is from the Euphrates to the great sea and the East Sea and the rivers that flow southward into the great sea. And I know many of you definitely have a copy of the book and, and have a good idea of what we're talking about from Dan to Beersheba, very, you know, you know, going into the depths of understanding the length and breadth of the land. So basically, for sure. The, I think that with just simply using the Bible, it's not a book trying to argue um, over the, the, the validity, pardon me, of the Bible and who wrote the Bible. No, that is not the argument there at all. Even, even if the Bible was written by Mother Goose, we always say this. That's not the point. The point is that the Bible, whoever wrote the Bible, we're not talking about translation and who this and that. We're just saying that according to the book, a book that is held in high esteem. It speaks of a promised land flowing with milk and honey. All of that we can explain. And this fits the, 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 the description. And I do say the characteristics, again, of the land of Africa plus Arabia. So basically, you go through the book. That's the points that we hit you with. So the reason why I kind of rest on that for a moment is because I'm not going to try to prove that at the moment. You know, that, that's, that's a fact. I mean, it's in the book. We have done several videos on that. In fact, I'm only returning to the subject now just to deal with a point um, directly dealing with uh, the, the city of David, the city where the Messiah was born. So basically, this will lead us into, if I'm not mistaken, the third chapter it is no the fourth chapter the city of david and it says here reading from second chronicles chapter 33 verse 14 so we're going to do a bit of of reading here just for a moment and it says here king james version now after this he built a wall without the city of david on the west side of Gion in the valley, even to the entering in at the fish gate, and compassed about Ophiel, and raised it up a very great height, and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. One of my favorite chapters in this book is when we speak of the unification of of the land of Africa, according to the Bible. That's another question people ask. A, a lot of people or, or, or comment on, oh, Africa was never one, you know? Especially when you try to look at it from a biblical perspective, oh, we can crush that theory here. Oh, prove in the Bible where Africa was one. I mean, that's right in the book here. The, the, from Dan to Beersheba clearly highlights that. Is it, is it that chapter? Whichever chapter, oh no, it's a chapter, the unity of the land, the unity of the land. But that's not what we're here to talk about. But we did a, a video where we highlighted that too, when it talks about the city of Thebes ruling from sea to sea. You know where Thebes is? Norway, the city of No, Norway, in Kemet, you know, ruling from sea to sea. 
the whole land of Africa, it was the capital of the land at the time. The Bible is explaining that. But again, you'd have to take time to, to go through this. So, so what I'm saying, we have a, everything, you know, everything is well aligned. You know, everything is in order for us to prove whatever point that we have to make. So Second Chronicles basically just explain that the city of David, this is the main point in all what we read that the city of David is to the west of the river Nile. Okay, what? Second Chronicles just said that the city of David, that Bethlehem, let, let's be clear. The Bible just said, Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse 14, just said that Bethlehem is to be found on the west side, get your maps out. Well, you don't have to get the maps out. I have them right here in the book. On the west side of the River Nile. Well, I, I didn't see none of that. Where, where did you see that? The city of David, isn't that Bethlehem? Well, I think so. Some people say it's Jerusalem. Well, I mean, it's all right. Whichever one, we'll work with it. Whichever one. We will work with it. And it's, it, it, it was a wall that was built uh, um, around the city. Without is an old English term. It is a wall built around the city of David on the west side of Gion. So this activity is on the west side of Gion. So if not the whole city, but the west side of the city where the wall is being on the west side of Gion. So the point is that the city of David is directly related to Gion. That's number one. I mean, we can't run from this. And the city of David is considered, it has a, a, a if you want to say, it is highly related as well to the west side of Gion. So not only is the city of David related to Gion, but the city of David is related to the west side of Gion. Fair enough, nothing wrong. Good. Where, what, where is the city of David again? What, what is, what's the other name for the city of David? It's Bethlehem, Bethlehem, okay, good. All right. Now, Genesis chapter two, verse 13 in the King James Version eh, of the Bible again, says here. And the name of the second river is Gion. This is Genesis chapter two, the second chapter in the whole book, the Bible. First book as such, Genesis, the book of Genesis in the, you know, the book called the Bible, the Holy Canon. And the second chapter of the book, the whole Genesis and the whole Canon. Verse 13, the second river name is Gion. All right, we got that already. The same the same one, the same river. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. Now, people want to move Ethiopia all over the world now, eh? As a, well, it's not really the Ethiopia of today, you know. It was more Sudan. I mean, I, I, I understand. I, I think it was more in South Africa, you know. And, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, many people consider the Blue Nile to be the Gion. What, what, what you have to keep in mind, it could be such. I'm not, I'm not going against that. My, my opinion is that the, the Nile in general is the Gion. Now, that's my opinion as such, but for sure it's related. Now, I'll show you why some people say that, because again, the land of Ethiopia is mentioned, you know. Now, the Blue Nile, for those who may not know, you could see it right here in our book here. This is figure eight, a map of Gion. It shows you that Lake Tana, you know, in Ethiopia, um, you could actually see the river of the Blue Nile is flowing out of Lake Tana and it joins with the White Nile that is coming out of Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya, Lake um, Enzania, uh, also known as the Queen Victoria Lake, as they call it. And 
these two rivers meet together. So it's the White Nile and the Blue Nile. You see, it? the White Nile and the Blue Nile. The Blue Nile is what comes out of Ethiopia. And they meet together to, in Sudan to form the Nile. And then they go southwards, uh, northwards, pardon me, um, down north into the land of Kemet. You see how the up, down, and north, south thing have you there. So it's down north. You know, it's actually, it's not, it's not, um, yeah, it's down north. That's really where the river flows. It flows down north, not up north, because you look at the map as the river flowing up. <laughs> the river is going down north. You know, so that's really where the civiliz civilization flow. But in ancient understanding from the historians, all of that is Ethiopia you're dealing with, you know, going up into the 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 um the region there, coming out of Sudan, going into Kemet, all of that is the 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 understanding of Ethiopia, even from the Greeks and the Romans, etc. And and even if that may not be the term we would have used, we understood our unity as well. So the point I'm making, the point that we're making here is that. There's a river that encompasses the whole land of Ethiopia. Listen here, whether it's the Blue Nile or the whole Nile, even if it's the White Nile, I would take anyone. Because the point still will remain that the city of David is to the west of the river Nile. Now remember the city of David, Bethlehem is in Palestine, you know. That's miles upon miles away from, from the river Nile. Yes, it may seem close on a map to some degree, but we know, man, anybody that travel and understand geography, that's a way distance you can that you cannot compare that city of David with this river Nile, this Gion, much less the Blue Nile, which is way, way, way far away from so-called Jerusalem today. Or Bethlehem, I should say. Because the city of David is where Christ was born. This is another thing. That's why we have to get these things straight. Where was Christ born? He was born in the city of David. Where is that? Well, that's in Palestine. We have a, a church group that goes there every year, see? See, amusement park, somebody set that up and you go and pay a fee and buy a ticket and go and, ex and experience where Jesus was born and where Jesus was crucified. And this is the tomb of Abraham. And this is, no, nah, come on. That was well put together. I'm positive because if you're dealing with scripture, even if you say you are Hebrew, Israelite, African, Israelite, whatever, the point is, I'm telling you the Bible clearly gives a description of this land of Israel. And it's not what is taught to us today. I'm showing you that the city of David is to the west of the Nile. It's not no miles and miles away. The Ethiopians say that Christ was born in Ethiopia. What about that? I hear one strike in the night now. I read that long time. Christ was born in a cave in Ethiopia. But I, oh, were you trying to say he wasn't born in Bethlehem? No, I didn't say that. He was born in a cave in Ethiopia, but listen to me good. That doesn't mean he wasn't born in Bethlehem. Maybe it means where you call Bethlehem is not the real Bethlehem where Christ was born. The cave in Ethiopia may just be on the west side of the river Gion, but the same river Gion encompasses the whole land of Ethiopia. What do you have to say about that? So, so the, the, the vibes is it clearly that the the contemporary Sunday school teaching that we have been given has fallen short for sure. You know, because once now we try to make up different stories and say, so, well, I think the Gion, they have two Gions and some spring in Gion and all of that, because we, we've been through that. But I'm going to show you something now that clearly puts all of this aside. Now, and we're going to see it here. We're looking at the book of First Kings, chapter one. Now, here it's going to be speaking of David, you know, passing on the power to 
King Solomon. David, the king of, of Israel, and you know, there was a little power struggle for the, for the crown. So Adonijah, one of David's son, decided that he would be king. And he one day decided that he's going to have a feast and proclaim himself king. And one of David's chief, chief, uh, chief right-hand individuals, I think it's Joab, kind of went and sided with, with Ad Adonijah to take the kingdom from, from David's successor, which would have been Solomon. So the prophet Nathan went to, to Solomon's mother, Beersheba, and then eventually went to David and David kind of straightened the thing out and, and said, hey, hey, no man, that's not how the story goes. Call his mother for me and call him and set up a donkey and and, and, and I'll explain the rest as we go along. So it says here, verse 24, And Nathan said, My Lord, O king, hast thou said, Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? Question. For he is gone down this day, and hath slain oxen, and fat cattle, and sheep in abundance and hath called all the king's son and the captains of the host and Abita, Abia, Abiata, the priests. And behold, they eat, and they eat and drink before him and say, God save Adonijah. Some may say Adonijah, Adonijah. But he, but me, even me, thy servant, as uh, the prophet talking, and Zadok the priest, and Benaiah, the son of Jehu Adad, Ada, pardon me, and thy servant Solomon, he hath he not called. This is this thing done by my lord the king, meaning is you set up this um, big man, and thou hast not showed it unto thy servant, and in a tell me nothing who should sit on the throne of my Lord, uh, the king after him, or oh, not me, and in a tell Solomon. Not. Then David said, uh, answered and said, call me Bathsheba. Mm. And she came unto the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore and said, as the Lord liveth, that hath redeemed my soul out of all distresses, even as I swear unto thee by the God, the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, let my Lord King David live forever. And King David said, call me Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. And they came before the king and the king also said unto them, take with you the servants of your law and cause Solomon, my son, to ride upon my own mule and bring him down to Gion. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him there at Gion, king over Israel, and blow ye the trumpet and say, God save King Solomon, then ye shall come after him that he may come and sit upon my throne, for he shall be king in my stead, and I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, answered the king and said, Amen, the Lord God of my Lord, the king, say so too. As the Lord hath been with my Lord the King, even so be he with Solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord King David. 
So Zadok, the priest, and Nathan, the prophet, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoadah, and the Cherithites, and the Pelithites, went down and caused Solomon to ride upon King David's mule and brought him to Gion. And Zadok, the priest, took a horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed Solomon. And they blew the trumpet. And all the people said, God save King Solomon. And all the people came up after him and the people piped with pipes. Yeah, man, chalice talk. And rejoiced with great joy so that the earth rent with the sound of them. And Adonijah and all the guests that were with him heard it as they had made an end of eating. And when Job heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, wherefore is this done? For, for, for the city be in an uproar. But why I say it here? What I am saying here is so long it take them to eat that meal. Huh? What are you talking about? How long it take you to finish that feast? How long was that feast that they were having there? Come on, let's not play now. This is not, you know what I mean? This is not Scooby-Doo. Let's be real. How long did it take them to finish that meal? When Nathan and Zadok went to King David, eh, the feast started already. When Nathan and Zadok went to King David, according to this, they already start the banquet and people were already eating before Adonijah. Man had the chicken bone in their mouth long time. David don't even know about that. David up there cooling out. And they have to come and say, King David, you know what's going on here? And it was a time because David said, go and call Ben Sheba. She come and, or uh, Bath Sheba, pardon me. She come and say what she had to say. David said, no, man, this is how we go. King Solomon going to rule. He can go and have his feast. Go and call Zadok now. Zadok came. Yeah, listen. You get some fellas and, make, and get my mule and cause King Solomon to ride on my mule and you go down to, to, to Gion and anoint him by Gion and then come back. But my Lord, if you put Solomon on a mule, that trip will take Oh, that we're looking at at least three months. By that time, Adonijah would have risen up and would have conquered you. You sure you don't want us to at least use horses? We could at least cut down the trip by two months. We may get through in a month if the will of Job be so. What is precise I'm talking about? Me? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Because when they done baptize Solomon, eh, or anoint Solomon, and they say, everybody cry out, yeah, oh, Solomon is king. What the scriptures say? The scriptures say, and Adonijah heard the cry of the people. From where? From where? And you mean to tell me he's still eating that? No, no, people, no, listen, listen, listen. The point I'm making, the point I'm making, is that this Gion River had to be close by. That's my point. That's my point. It had to be down the hill. It couldn't be nowhere too far. Remember the city of David, you know. The wall was built around it on the west side of the Gion. The city of David is connected to the Gion. The Bible says that the Gion is the river Nile, the river that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia, whether it's the Blue Nile or the whole Nile. Still, is the holy ground, Kemet, Nubia, Ethiopia, the true biblical land of Israel, somebody trying to steal your birthright. And even those of us that become conscious, we still miss the boat. I tell you about the false cross last night in the boat, you know. Remember the boat came named Jesus, the false cross. It's a boat, you know, named some a boat. I wonder if you remember the lesson from previous evening when we were speaking about Pascal. If you didn't see it, please go and check it out again. Yeah, yeah same best man in the beauty of she also has all her Pascal there, you know. 
So, so, so the vibes is family, eh? That, that, that Bethlehem and Jerusalem, them is the ancient cities of Kemet and, and Nubia and Ethiopia. That is why the story is, listen, I ain't asking nobody, you know, because I know for sure. I know, I know, I know what I say. I mean, if you, if you sat into the living gods of Kemet when we went into Tutankhamun, when we bust down Ramesses the second, when we clearly show the world up to now, I don't see no one come with a runner up to clearly explain who Akhenaten is. Fellas still dissing the God as if they didn't hear what nobody said, you know, white elephant in the room. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's, it's just him, the rest of the man. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. But I know nobody, no one can go against the philosophy we put down. Look what I just put down here. Who? Who? Raise your hand, let me see. No, no, no smirky comments, you know. Raise your hand properly. Don't throw no stone and run. Raise your hand properly and deny anything that we just put on the ground. Put the river gear somewhere else. Put Bethlehem somewhere else. Come and tell me that Bethlehem is in Palestine is the real Bethlehem in the Bible. There ain't no human being that could try that. I don't care how long your Hebrew, Israelite, Christian, anything. Nobody can deny what we just put down there. If you are using the Bible, the most you can come with is that, well, the Bible is not an authentic book. But that's not the debate. That's not the debate at all. It's almost 16 years, you know, we're pushing this concept here. We don't challenge people on many things. But up to now, the challenge still stands. Over 1,000 um, universities, colleges, schools, institute, churches, mosques, all Rasta we challenge. That's why I always have to respect what a man named Willie Jeremy, a pastor from St. Lucia, he accepted the challenge. And, and it was a Royal Rumble and Mr. Russell Lake show. But of course, I mean, <laughs> and you have to understand, you know, my manuscript is already written. You could take five years and study it and then come in. I don't know where you come in with, you know, I have no idea. You could take my book and study that and then come. Can you imagine that? So, 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 so don't you think I have the right to say what I say, how I say it? Because no one comes, so we should just throw the towel in and stop pretend as if we don't hear what precise I say. That's my point. <laughs> give thanks for the light, give and the keep of life. So for sure, you're dealing with, and this is not no opinion and, and looking no one's, um, you know, when we're talking about Bethlehem, we're talking of Ethiopia. When you're talking about Jerusalem, you're talking about Kemet. You know, I understand. I know ones will mumble, but again, just, you know, replay the last three minutes of what I said and you'll understand what I'm saying again. You know, makes sense mumbling and rumbling. There's nothing really coming behind that, you know. So it's just about taking the time and going through the information. All of this, my family, is in the book known as the true biblical land of Israel. You understand the true biblical land of Israel, as I just said, started as a theological paper. And um, also there was a university that responded. Um, they said, I read it right on air. I'm sure some of you could remember. I came and I said, well, this university, the university of, I can't even remember what the university name was because they were supposed to get back to me in a few days and they never got back to me at all. You know, they, they read my challenge and it sounds interesting. I think they were Jewish. I had a Jewish or, or um, Jewish or Christian university. Well, listen, man, listen, I'm not no debate freak, you know. You see, the thing is, eh, especially when I put this concept, when I really, you know, looked at it at first, the thing that really touched me is that this is more than religion. You see, this is, this is reality. This is what runs the world. The Jewish people runs the world. This is not all Bible. Come on. This, if you go through the beginning of the book, we take the time to talk about the Balfour Agreement. You know, look at it here. The New York Times. New York Times. Not, not, not Genesis chapter 5, you know. The New York Times. Zionists proclaim new state in Israel. Who, who give them power to do that? True man recognizes it. True man. You sure? How true is this? And hopes for peace. Are you hoping now? <laughs> Tel Aviv is, tell, tell, uh, tell uh, um, Aviv is bombed. 
Egypt orders invasion. Mm -hmm. This is what this would be under the time. This is Nasir. But anyway, whatever the case is, so 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 it is a very it's geopolitics. It's a lot of geopolitics mixed up with some religion to kind of make sure everybody can fall prey to it. It's geopolitics. Everyone knows who runs the world, the media and entertainment and basically everything. The news, we know that. That's why you can't talk too hard around them places here. Then just give you a strike and oh well, we, you're going against our protocols. Yeah. So really, again, this is why this concept is, is so strong. Because a person might even come and tell you, well, it doesn't matter. But again, they will take a trip with Pastor this and Reverend that, and they're going to the Holy Land. It's the Holy Land. You understand? And, and they, they have people, when they were bombing the Palestine, the, the Palestinians the other day, they had people right here in Antigua calling on a radio station saying, y'all leave Israel alone. You know what I mean? The, the, the Palestinians wrong. They're supposed to just find some way to, to live. They should go in the desert. God will bless them for giving Israel back the land and coming out of the land. That's the kind of rhetoric people talking here. You know, you know I mean, not have been saying it word for word, but I'm not, I'm not being like adding to it to make it sound powerful. That's how people talk. <laughs> you understand? So you can see how deep in the mire that that kind of conversation is. And the thought pattern to even say something like that. Like, wow. Who is you, brother? Not even brother was a woman that really was seen that one day. But, but there's brothers and sisters that think like that. That's the point I'm making. She's just speaking for many. You understand? So, so that's the reality of it. It's deeper than that. You know, again, that is why you yourself, you think, you think um, when you when you speak about your Holocaust, nobody respect it. It's as if I mean, come on, let's forget about that. That done gone and so already. You can't even say nothing bad too hard about you know what i mean the people them that rape you and kill you you think you can say anything too hard about george washington you know what i mean abraham lincoln is a saint and all of these people here you know even columbus and so get passed you understand you know which jew you know that love hitler you know hitler is the worst thing eh? yeah i mean i definitely i'm not no hitler fan for sure but in the same way, like our enemies like to give us our heroes, they give us our heroes. They say, well, listen, you, you, you worship this nigga here. You understand? That's how they think of it. Eh? And it's not that the person they give you is, is nothing wrong, maybe wrong with them as such, you know. But we have other people that they purposely sweep under the carpet. They don't want you to know nothing about them people here. You just work with these few here that we give. That's how they do. And it's the same way with our enemies. They give us our enemies. So Hitler is the worst thing ever. I mean, I'm not, I definitely not here back in no Hitler. Eh? But me personally, I ain't got Hitler in no different book than all the other people. So uh, Hitler is worse than Leopold II and all them, um, you know, the kings of England that invade Africa, even during the World War. And, 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 and you see, the reason they don't speak about Mussolini is because they don't want to tell you nothing about Haile Selassie. Because when you speak about Mussolini, you got to mention Haile Selassie. It's all a game. It's all hiding this and making this look worse than it is. And, and, and so, so you don't see the other real killers. And all. So who was funding Hitler? Who was funding Hitler? Go into them talk now. Who was funding Hitler? And didn't stop until Hitler disappeared. No. All right. And, and if you can't answer them question there, you shouldn't follow their rhetoric. You shouldn't I ain't telling you not to bonfire and hit Lenama. Day and night. What are you talking about? But don't don't act as if you have some special calls for him more than the rest of them. Don't follow their rhetoric. Don't follow their rhetoric at all. Anyway, I think I've given you a lot of time there. I don't want to take much more. Sure, you have many things to do as well, but I'm honored that you you know, took the time to spend the time with me. And as I said, we are preparing uh, for the Tiger's Nest Radio Anu. Again, I already gave you all 
instructions on how you could definitely find us on Radio Anu. Just, just um, go to the link below. In fact, you don't have to even remember nothing. Just go to the link. All the links are below. PriestIsaacInstitute.com. I would even give you the link directly to Radio Anu as well. Make sure you browse the website for sure. And I'm just reminding you once more, if you didn't get it at the beginning, that the International Home School um, program special that we had until Mascal, it continues. So everything is easy, my brothers and sisters. And I know long doing and how to get to this and get to that. Just come to the website. Look, the email is right in front of you. You could just press the link and everything is right there. And again, you are in a position, you know, just interact with us and ask for, uh, even if it's a sneak preview, and you will definitely get a sneak preview. And for sure, we have a special gift for all the parents who would be definitely joining or bringing their children into the international homeschool. Yeah, man, we give thanks. We're celebrating, you know, you know, as we enter into the brand new website, Radio Anu. So it's all about expressing and giving love here at the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. So family, do give thanks again for the life giver and the keeper of life. Did, life, pardon me. Did I remind you of Kidemi? That's our, our, our Sunday morning. Well, it's your Sunday morning cup of tea. And if I did not remind you of such, well, definitely make sure you join us this Sunday. Everything is radio and listen, I don't even have to tell you these things. When you put on radio and radio and you should not be coming off. That's the point. So everything is just right there. And, and even again, the book we just went through, the true biblical land of Israel. And of course, our other books, the book and ancient and modern and our more recent book, which is the heavens declare the glory. I think many ones sleeping on this book here. Eh? You're sleeping on the heavens declare the glory. Trust me. I'm telling you, ask Charles Finch about this one here. You're sleeping on this one. But anyway, all of this can be received at the website. Just visit the website and, you know what I mean, have a feel the man and full joy yourself. Yes, life given the keeper of life. My family. Holy Manuel I, Selassie I, Ja, Rastafari. Yes, I see you on radio. And blessed love. Give thanks.